Hey guys, I'm Daisho, and I am here to talk about the stupidity that is the deadliest warrior. So this week, the episode was uh, the Nazi SS versus the Viet Cong. And in my opinion, they usually there usually isn't so many controversial things in the gu post-gunpowder battles, but this time, I don't know, I thought it was pretty stupid. First of all, I have to say, the Viet Cong had two weapons that were um, trip mines or whatever, where if you walk it over it, then you die, and that's a bit of, that's a bit ridiculous. For I mean, you only really need one of those. Why would you need two different traps that accomplish the exact same goal? And I mean, this is the same problem that I had with Al Capone. He had a knife and brass knuckles. There's really, there's no point in both of them. They're both close range, short range weapons that you won't use them for anything. So that, I had the problem with the F1 grenade slash Palm Z2 and the punji stakes. In my opinion, they accomplished the exact same goal. Then the next thing that I had a problem with was the pistol and the uh, submachine guns that they tested. They did not test the pistols or the submachine guns. They tested the accuracy and skill of the marksmen shooting them. And, I mean, I don't see how that's even useful at all. It's ju <laughs> It doesn't show the abilities of the guns. I mean, the only difference between the MP28 and the MAT-49, I believe, is that the MAT-49 shoots 50 um, rounds per minute faster. Maybe one of them has a longer range. But the tests they did just showed... I mean, they called it even, but even the tests that they did, the MP28 versus the MAT-49, were stupid. Because the guy with the MP28 had to deal with a random screen of jungle in his way, while well, the Viet Cong guy had a clear view, and I don't know, I mean, it seemed like the guy shooting the MP-28 was probably a better marksman, and that's pro and he probably would have won if it was the same test, so they decided to give that even, but it looks like in the testing, the guy with the MP-28 did much better for some reason, so I, I don't know, I'll talk about that a little later, and then the same is true with the pistol, I mean, the thing, I can't really see how the pistol only got 50 kill. The Nazi pistol, the Mauser C69, uh, got only got 50 kills, and the Tokarev got 42. I mean, the Tokarev looks like a good gun f if you want to conceal it, but it shoots eight rounds, and I don't know. I mean, the, the computer guy was just saying such bullshit. He's just saying, well, if you only have eight rounds, you have to make sure everyone counts. And if you have 20 rounds in your clip, then you don't have to make sure everyone counts. You can shoot faster, and you're going to kill the guy quicker. I mean, it, that's just a, a ridiculous thing to say, especially because, I don't know, we're assuming that these guys are pretty good at what they're doing. I don't know. I guess the Viet Cong may not have been expert marksmen because, as they said, they only had three rounds a day to practice with. And I don't know why the announcer said that could be an advantage. That just makes it harder. Because if you haven't shot a gun as many times as a Nazi guy, then you're not going to kill as many people. I hate to say. But now I really think is the time that they should explain the mystery of the terrain. What terrain are they playing on in these battles? I've been wondering this since Ninja vs. Spartan Season 1. And they have never even given a hint to what the... What the um, environment is that the battle is taking place. Obviously, jungle warfare, the Viet Cong have an advantage. That's what they played in. They killed Americans and won basically won the war by fighting in the forest and not showing their faces. If it's just a, an open field and the Nazis can see them from a range, of course the Nazis are going to win. Then that, That's what they specialized at. And the... Uh, the Viet Cong really wouldn't stand a chance. So, n they're not. Not only is it um, stupid that they didn't um, show the terrain, but I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, it, it was just. It's just ridiculous. They really have to start telling us what the terrain is, and if or at least tell us that they're doing it on just. I mean, I don't know. You can't. Maybe the sim simulation doesn't keep um, 
doesn't keep it into doesn't take it into account but then I would say that's bullshit on the simulation it's just stupid why wouldn't it take into account I mean how could it not take into account environment just think about it logically if you're shooting somebody will there be a tree in the way will there not be a tree in the way that's open grass or not or or is it or jungle warfare and um I don't know I don't I mean obviously the uh acting at the end doesn't show um who actually where where the battle actually takes place i mean i'm just assuming that because the battle at the end is stupid anyway uh the flamethrower makes me think that it was probably a battle in i don't know actually it doesn't mean anything it just because it had pretty decent range on that thing and uh, that looks like a pretty devastating weapon in my opinion and that's pretty much what I think balanced the, uh, uh, made, made the Nazis win, whatever. I'm not a fan of Nazis winning ever, but, um, in Deadliest Warrior this week, I, I was pretty sure they were gonna win, they were the professional soldiers, versus the Viet Cong, who were just, I mean, they, they were good at what they did, obviously, because they defeated the American army, and the Nazis didn't even defeat the American army, but, then, I mean, the Viet Cong didn't face the, entirety of the American army for, I mean, they, they faced whatever the Americans could send, and then the Americans stopped. In World War II, the Americans obviously would never stop, or they would have eventually been taken over. So, I mean, it's not exactly synonymous uh, circumstances, but... I, I have to be honest, and I would say that the Nazis would probably won, even though, I mean, to be honest, the people, I'm going to go back to the shooting, the people who were shooting the guns, they didn't seem that skilled, I mean, I don't, obviously I couldn't shoot a gun that well, but it didn't, I mean, the guy who was shooting the pistol for Jesse James, he, I mean, the revolver, he probably could have taken out the targets in a quarter of the time. Because um, he's an expert gun shooter, so um, it really the gun the guns didn't show anything. The guns that they used in the testing didn't show how how useful the guns were. They just showed how skilled the marksmen were. So I mean, I said that before, but that's just a major point. That and the the environment. They have to tell us what kind of environment they're putting it on, otherwise. I mean, half the point of the show was wasted, in, in my opinion. So, um, I guess that's all I really have for this week. Oh, yeah, um, I was watching on my DVR, and DVRs are great. You don't have to watch commercials, and they record whatever shows you're going to miss. So, I love that. But the thing that I do not love is the fact that um, the Nazi was hiding behind his car, and he just pulled on his flamethrower, and the other guy was shooting pistol rounds at him, and then all of a sudden it stopped, because it didn't, for some, whatever reason, it didn't get the entire recording, and that kind of pissed me off. I mean, at that point, I was 99% sure that the Nazi guy was just going to pop up and blow his face off with a flamethrower, but, um... <laughs> I still had to look it up on Wikipedia afterwards. I actually forgot to look it up because I was so sure the Nazi one. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And please rate and like this video. Um, like this video and comment on this video with your comments, positive or negative. I, am, I love hearing your feedback. Thank you for watching. Bye.